Opening weekend in the SEC is finally here. The long-awaited start of conference play. Nine teams ranked in the top 25 to start the SEC opening weekend, and we have two of them right here this afternoon on SEC Network. A top 25 showdown between Georgia and Auburn at Jack Turner Stadium here in Athens, Georgia. Hello again, everybody. Matt Schumacher, Alicia Ocasio with you. Two-time All-American, national champion at Florida. You played a lot of ball in this conference. What's it like from a player's perspective finally getting into conference play? Well, in preseason, that's a time for a team to find and establish their identities. Rolling into SEC play, it's a tough conference. You know that, Matt. So I'm excited to see how day two rolls out for these two teams. No doubt it is a tough conference. As we mentioned at the top, nine teams ranked in the top 25. Two more receiving votes. These, of course, are two of those, Georgia and Auburn, and yet they're picked in the preseason poll, middle to the bottom of the pack. Your Florida Gators picked to win the conference this year. Of course, Arkansas won it last year for the first time in program history, winning the regular season and the conference tournament championship. They are picked third. Here last night, we had a really good game, a 6-5 winner for Auburn. Ball was left out a little bit too much over the plate for Georgia's liking. And you just can't do that with a team like Auburn. These two teams lead the SEC in home runs, and when you leave the plate over the middle like that, they're going to do some damage. Three home runs for the Auburn Tigers last night. These two teams rank one and two in the SEC in home runs. The starter today in the circle for Georgia is Madison Kerpix. And what I love most about Madison Kerpix is her ability to utilize her changeup for all speed and any count. And she will throw multiple times. She has a win-loss record of 6-4, ERA of 1.7, throws mid-60s and throws everything. And here we go for game two. Kerpix misses outside for ball one. Saw Kerpix in two and two-thirds innings of relief last night. Lindsey Garcia led the way for Auburn, had a home run and a double. Elia Peralta leads off this dangerous Auburn offense. One of the tops in the country, 12th in batting average, 7th in runs per game. And they apply pressure on the base paths, too. Top 25 in stolen bases. And right now, all I'm trying to do is get in a groove. Peralta led the game yesterday with a home run. So right now, I want to keep her off bases to try to set the tone for the rest of the game. Pitching certainly been a strength for this Georgia team coming into league play. The 3-0 from Kerpix is a walk on four pitches, and Peralta aboard to start the ball game. You don't necessarily want to start off the game with a walk. A lot of the time, you lead off the inning with a walk that does some damage. So Peralta at first. Harley McCondishy in the batter's box takes a strike. And the thing I love most about McCondishy, she can do all three. She has speed, she can lay down a bunt, she can slap, but she can also hit for power. One for four last night in game one. Auburn with nine hits last night. They were actually out hit by this Georgia team. But they capitalized with runners aboard. Can they do it here with nobody out and a runner at first? McCondishy in the center. And caught by the second baseman, Sidney Kuma, one away. Typically with a runner on first and no outs, we want to try our best to move that runner. Well, so Jesse, we'll see Jesse we'll see Blaine will try to do it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Blaine batting 296 this year. of a number of returners for this Auburn team. 
that lost in the Clemson Regional a season ago. Blaine up the middle, and that will move the runner up. Peralta in at second base, two on and one down. Really good job by Blaine just staying through that pitch, not doing too much, hitting it right back up the middle where that pitch was pitched. Interesting to see how Kopix bounces back this afternoon. One of the things that Tony Baldwin, the head coach for Georgia, mentioned was that he felt like his pitchers left the ball over the plate a little bit too much yesterday. An excuse me swing from Ellis leads to a bang bang play at first, two down, both runners advance. And you know what, Matt? I'm okay with that because we moved the runners. Now both runners are in scoring position. It's like a bunt, basically. Pretty much, right? She did the job. So runners at second and third for Lindsey Garcia. Homered and doubled last night. Lindsey Garcia, the one to hit the bomb in left field to put them up six to five to win the ball game. That was a bomb, too. It was. You called it a Brie bomb before we came bomb. on the air. Bree with already seven home runs a season. 23 games in, she ranks 12th in the Auburn history with 27 career home runs. We'll see if she can break that record. Ellis moved both runners over to second and third, giving way to Lindsey Garcia. And she and Ellis last night both homered. A three home run night for Auburn in three separate innings. Here comes the 2-1 from Kerpix. And a pop-up out of play behind home. Auburn jumped out to the early lead in last night's game. A leadoff home run from Nelia Peralta. And Georgia came storming back in the third. But every time the Bulldogs gained some momentum, Auburn had the answer. And the Tigers get on the board first in game two. Swing and a miss. Big time strikeout from Kerpik, stranding two runners on. And the Bulldogs will have a chance to strike first in the bottom of the first when we come back from Athens. SEC Softball is brought to you by T-Mobile 5G Home Internet. Coming in hot to your hometown. Shelby Lowe gets the start again today for Auburn, making her sixth start of the season. And has been really good for a staff that has three true starters on rotation. Shelby Lowe coming in with a 2-2 record, an ERA of just over two. Great curveball rise and changeup. Utilized her curveball a lot last night and only pitched 2.1 innings where she got taken out. Leading things off for Georgia. Dallas, good night. Good night, a transfer from Bama. come over and established herself as the starter in center field. Went 0 for 4 to start the game, to start the series rather, last night. And this team got a big game from Sarah Mosley. Went 2 for 4 with a homer, a double, two runs and a run batted in. Looking for a little bit more production out of Goodnight. She's been solid at the top of the order so far this season. And as a leadoff, if you're getting on multiple times a game, you're setting the tone for the rest of the line. With good night speed, it's hard to not get on base. Speed never slumps. So if she can just tap the ball, if she can lay down a bunt, she'll be able to get on first base and make things shake. 
There you go, a squirter to second base. McCondishy flips it in time. One away. And that gives way to Sarah Mosley. We talked about it in the top half of the inning, but Georgia did have success last night against this Tigers pitching staff, one of the best pitching staffs in the country, at least through the non-conference. Nine hits, but they left nine aboard. Lowe's starting us off with the backdoor curveball for a ball. When she's utilizing the other side of the plate with her backdoor curve, I think that's when she's most successful. High pop up left side of the infield. Peralta makes the catch, two gone. Low getting in on her hands a little bit, jamming her, making her pop up for an easy fly ball. She loves. Low battled the injury much of last season. And they've been progressing her back slowly. That's why we've seen pretty low inning counts for her at least earlier on in the year. Got the start yesterday, went two and a third. Has looked really good so far in this series. First pitch is low to Jada Kearney. And although she only pitched 2.1 innings yesterday to start her today, that shows a lot of confidence in low. Maybe we'll one, two, three to start the ball game. Maybe we'll see a similar game plan just like yesterday. Well, when we talked to Tony Baldwin, <laughs> one of the questions he was asked on our Zoom this week was, what stands out to you about this Auburn team? And he said the fact that they have three really good pitchers that they might use in a game. Mm -hmm. And when you have depth within your pitchers, you're able to kind of mix and match however you want to. Kearney down the right field line and the first base runner aboard this afternoon for Georgia. And now Kearney, four for five in all of her plate appearances today and yesterday. And she just smoked that down the right field line. Went three for four in game one with a double and has extended the inning for Lindy Ray Davis, the lefty. Lindy Ray also two for three last night, so she put some good swings on the bat yesterday for some hits. Looks at the ball upstairs, 1-0. Oh. At this point with two outs, I'm just trying to put a good swing on a good pitch, not trying to do too much, want to pass the bat so we can get a runner in scoring position. Well, Davis can get on and extend the inning. Sydney Kuma awaits on deck. She went one for two last night, also drew a walk. Davis in the right field, playable, and caught on the run by Lindsey Garcia. So low pitches around a two out hit, Stranding one, no score after one in Athens. It was a tight game last night in game one of our three game set, a doubleheader today. Opening weekend of SEC play. Georgia out hit Auburn and yet Alicia left nine runners on base. That was one of the things that Tony Baldwin pointed to the head coach but the Georgia Bulldogs also talked about his pitchers leaving the ball over the middle of the plate a little bit too much in the middle innings. Tigers took advantage. Three home runs last night, and they lead the series 1-0. How important do you think it is in a conference as competitive as the SEC to win the opening series? With a conference like the SEC, I feel like anything can happen. These teams are so competitive. They match up really well. While it is important to win as many SEC games as you want, just so you can win the conference, these teams are still trying to figure out their identities going into opening weekend. 
And uh, you can lose a whole series, but still go on a postseason and, and make a good run. So. So it's not live or die. It's not live or die. Weekend. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of softball left to play for sure. Absolutely. KK McCrary leads things off for the Tigers. One of a couple of transfers who has come in this year for Mickey Dean. Began her career at Tennessee. Kerpik's back in the circle. And catches the inside corner two and one. Crary riding a four game hit streak, went one for three on Friday night. McCrary, Packer, Lizenby, the do ups for the Tigers here in the top of the second. 3-1, a leadoff walk. So back-to-back -back innings for the Tigers, drawing a leadoff walk on Maddie Kerpix. It didn't hurt them last inning. You're right about that. <laughs> Can Mississippi State bounce back today after losing 7-zip to number one Oklahoma? The Sooners with just one loss, one of four games this afternoon starting at noon Eastern. And we are highlighting Mississippi State and Oklahoma. Game two of their two-game series in Starkville. Should be a great day of softball as Packer looks at a strike. One on and nobody out. To your point, Kerpix pitched around two on and one out last inning, including a leadoff walk, Danelia Peralta. And as a pitcher, leading off with a walk is something you do not want to do. You want to try to get that first out that's integral to the rest of the inning. but. Packer, two for three last night. Let's see if she can continue that momentum, maybe move McCrary to second base so we can get a runner in scoring position. And one of the most dangerous base runners in the country, Packer in the box right now, had 21 stolen bases last year. And really apply pressure on this Georgia defense. Prairie at first, Packer at the dish. And Kerpix catches the outside corner for strike three. And now a strikeout in each of the first two innings for Kerpix, one down. Beautiful pitch by Kerpix on the outside corner, throwing her out pitch. That is her MO. She is looking confident. And I would love to see her utilize that pitch more, get more strikeouts, get more ground outs. Swing and a miss. How about that rip from Aubrey Lizenby? 0-1. Such a great pitch when you can utilize both your rise ball and then your changeup low in the zone. You're bound to keep hitters off balance because you can utilize both pitches in order to get strikeouts in different quadrants on the zone. Keeps hitters all balance. Well, one of the things that Tony Baldwin told us about Maddie Kerpix, super spinny and up in the zone. Opposing hitters have a problem picking up on the spin that she brings. When pitches are spinny, I feel like it's harder to hit than speed sometimes. So deceptive. Working on back-to-back -back strikeouts here. One on one down, top of the second, no score. Kerpix already earlier this season in late February earned SEC Pitcher of the Week went 3-0, tossing 19 consecutive scoreless innings and striking out 18. First Bulldog pitcher to earn SEC Pitcher of the Week since Mary Wilson Avant back in 2018. And a terrific start to her season, but a good at bat here from Aubrey Lizenby.
Kerr picks with two pitches up in the zone consecutively. I'd love to see a change up low and out. She can play with the... Oh, the foul down the left field line. That's three in a row now for Lizenby. Three in a row. Was setting her up with that rise in. And now go and change up out. And the one, two, right over the heart of the plate. Back to back strikeouts <laughs> for Kerpix. Got her on a curveball. I love it. Kerpix just painting that corner with that curveball outside. Had Lizen be stunned. So now two down for Annabelle Weidra. We've seen a little bit more hard from Kerpix today so far. Think more than we saw yesterday from her? Absolutely. When you're facing multiple teams, when you're facing the same team multiple times, you got to figure out different ways to try to get them out. Yesterday, change up. Today, now she's utilizing her hard stuff. The 1-1 one -one to Reedra. Two down and a runner at first. And what I love about Weidra, and I have to say, as a three-way player myself, I love that she's also on the mound, in the box, and she's playing defense. See a lot of her this year over at third base for the Tigers. That's still a position that they're continuing to figure out. Dealt with some injury last year, shifting players around. Weidra, of course, transferring in from Michigan. Saw her pitch and play third in game one last night. Bounces it foul up the first baseline. When you were in these types of series facing the same team twice in the circle, were you making adjustments in your head going into the game or more so during the game the second time through? I think you make adjustments going into the game, but also you, ha you make in-game adjustments just depending on what you see, what they look like. Sometimes I would see hitters move up in the box to try to catch my drop ball early, and then I would just go hard, keep them off balance. So definitely can make an in-game adjustment, but also a pre-game adjustment. Looks like she made a pre-game one with her hard stuff coming in today as opposed to yesterday. The 2-2. Two -two. And the count runs full to Annabelle Weidra. McCrary with a leadoff walk to start the inning. Back-to-back -back innings with a leadoff walk for the Tigers. Trying to take advantage here. Two really good at bats. Lizenby ran up the pitch count. Weidra's doing the same here with two down. All I'm doing here is just trying to protect the plate. Runner on first. We've got three, two, two outs. I'm running on the pitch. Try to cover as much ground as I can. Get over to third, get in scoring position. Got to run on the board. Another 3-2, popped up, foul territory. Mosley makes the catch. Two strikeouts in the inning. Kerpix up to three, and she pitches around a leadoff walk for the second inning in a row. No score here in Athens, Georgia, heading into the bottom of the second, game two of our top 25 series between Auburn and Georgia. Of course, the Bulldogs led by Tony Baldwin. 
who told us he really likes where they're at coming into conference play. They won 11 of their last 12 games coming into this series, including eight shutouts during that stretch. But he said, we're going to learn a lot about our team this weekend going up against an Auburn pitching staff that is so deep. And then we talked about it last night, Alicia, their offense, three home runs in game one. And the thing about that is Tony doesn't even feel like they've hit their stride with these hitters. So I believe we're gonna we're gonna see that as we head into SEC play, and hopefully they can keep their streak going with 12 hits. See some more tonight. Sydney Kuma leads things off, middle of the lineup here. Kuma Fields Chambly for the Bulldogs. Shelby Low back in the circle for Auburn. Kuma, the only Bulldog to start every game last year at second base. That goes to show how reliable and how great her glove is over there and what she brings to the team defensively. Starting in her 170th career collegiate game this afternoon. It's a lot of games. It's a lot of ball. All of them at second base. All of them at second base. Georgia really has incredible continuity chemistry particularly in the middle infield between her and Ellie Armistead the one two and when you have that chemistry in the middle infield leading the defense leading the team that brings everybody together new catcher into the ball game for Auburn, Aspen Godwin replaces Aubrey Lizenby. So one two is popped up over to the right side. Back on it, McCondishi, and she makes the catch one away. But we will keep an eye on the catching situation for Auburn. You know, and talking with both coaches coming into the weekend, they feel like this year maybe more than in years past certainly last season they have better depth at the catcher position Mickey Dean looking on from the Auburn dugout in his sixth season at the helm for the Tigers Jaden Fields in the box going for a bunt try to get on first base Trying to apply pressure. Exactly. Sees first base playing a little bit back. Want to utilize that and exploit that. Try to drop one down the first base line. Fields went two for four last night with an RBI. Red shirt senior from Kennesaw, Georgia. A high fly ball down the right field line. Charging in, Garcia makes the catch in foul territory two away. Swing on a pitch a little bit up and out in the zone. And the tip of her bat on it, just not enough. So now it's Sydney Chambly. Base is empty, two down. No score. One thing I learned about Cindy Chamley is that she likes to sing. Very talented singer. Very talented. Not only a great softball player, but off the field, she has some pipes. She's also involved in a handful of the leadership organizations around campus. Well-rounded. Student Very athlete. Very much so. Lines the 0 1 in fair territory down the line. Chambly rounding for second base. The throw is not in time. Now she's headed for third. McCrary didn't get her. Wow. 
Not only a great hit, but that slide to be able to avoid the tag. Incredibly aggressive and heads up base running by Sidney Chambly. An inside pitch just turning on it. Gets by Ellis. She knows automatically that she wants to go to two, but hits off of her helmet. Aggressive base running, like you said, Matt, to be able to go to three, but knowing how athletic she is, get around that tag. We call that a hook slide. Well, Doing a great job. Bang, bang, play at third base. They are going to review our umpires this afternoon, Cameron Ellison, Steve Gould, Mark Brown. It is officially scored a double. And then Chambly advanced to third on an error by Lindsey Garcia. Here's another look at it. She knows it'll be close. Now, does her hand stay on the bag here? Looks like it. What a slide. If her left hand came off, her right hand was definitely on. She knew to get that hand on because of how much her momentum would take her past the bag with that hook slide. I think she does a really good job at getting around it. Yeah, that's just a fantastic slide. The ball beat her there by a step or two. So athletic. And the roar of the crowd says it all. Chambly safe at third with two outs, putting pressure on this Auburn defense that has now committed an error in each of the first two games of the series. Such great athleticism and instincts to be able to take three on that mishap happening at second base. So now Allie Kerlin has an opportunity to punch in the first run of the game for Georgia. Down one game in the series. And she doesn't have to do too much. Just a little poke to the outfield, a little ground ball through the infield would do the job. The runner on third base. First pitch swinging for the Penn State transfer sends it foul and out of play. afternoon at Jack Turner Stadium 65 overcast sky perfect weather for opening weekend of SEC play one one count from Shelby Lowe rocked in the center but playable for Garcia she won't get there Packer tried to make the play and it's a one nothing lead for Georgia Looked like Garcia from right field was going to come in and make the catch. Instead, it ended up being Packer trying to dive and make the play, and it bounced off her glove. Well, I think there was some form of miscommunication with that. And then Packer having to come in and try to dive for that ball couldn't make the play, which resulted in a run scoring. So Georgia bounces out to a lead, and how about the base running from Sidney Chambly. That is what has set up this 1-0 lead for the Bulldogs. Armistead, a first pitch swing, fouls it off the screen. And with playing an SEC, we got to be able to make those routine plays or it's going to come back and bite us like it did with Georgia. Chambly roped one down the right field line. Stretched a single to a double, forced an errant throw, got to third. And then Curlin just put bat on ball, got it in play, gave her team an opportunity. And the inning continues here. Runner in scoring position, two down in the top of the lineup. Next, if Armistead can pass the bat. Lo 
Throws 2-1, lined in the left field, and caught! K.K. McCrary, headlong dive, reels it in to end the inning. That's a game-saving play right there in left field. Look at this. Great catch by K.K. in left field, laying out, getting all of that one. That's the play that we wanted to see last. Great job. Nothing compares to playing in the SEC. SEC is the best of the best. Oh my goodness! Is she safe? Welcome to SEC opening weekend on SEC Network. Game two between Georgia and Auburn, a top 25 showdown. Auburn got the best of Georgia last night, 6-5, three bombs, but the Bulldogs on top here as we start the top of the third. Nelia Peralta leading things off. Second time through the lineup for the Tigers. Nelia leading the first inning with a walk. Content to keep the bat on her shoulders, two and one. Let off the game last night with a home run, did Peralta. Yes, she did. Now she has a hitter's count. See what she can do with the bat in her hand right now. Kerpix has pitched around a pair of walks and a single in the first inning. Three strikeouts. Coming up on her 45th pitch of the afternoon. Ground ball to second, backhanded by Kuma. On to first and a stretching play by Jaden Fields. Great job by Kuma with sticking with that ball. And an even better. You see her going her backhand, getting on one knee, can't quite grab it with her glove, bare hands it. Straight to field with a great, great stretch to get that out. McCondishi trying to drop down a bunt foul. How about the play by Kuma to stick with it? Just That's sort exactly. of a sidearm, like noodle armed it over to first base. Yeah, got in that slot. That was the best throw that she could have made. And that's why she's playing second base. She can hold it down. Even with that little mishap, she was able to get the ball and just make a good throw. In her 170th career start at second base this afternoon for Georgia, has really solidified this middle infield. Her and Armistead and then Mosley has also started over 100 games over at third. Got to give you some confidence if you're in the circle and you're Maddie Kerpix. Absolutely. I would want Kuma behind me all day as a pitcher. Here's Mosley at third. Easy play for her, two gone. Now, one of the things you talked about, Alicia, last inning was the adjustment that you're seeing from Maddie Kerpix, throwing harder, maybe an adjustment she decided to make coming into this game. How do you counter that if you're Auburn? Because right now, Kerpix seems to be getting into a groove. Yeah, she looks really good in the circle, kind of shifting her her scouting report and just going a little bit harder. Right now, if I was a hitter, I probably wouldn't want to sit on her changeup as much. I would just try to find something hard in the zone that I can drive and try to go back up the middle and react to the changeup. Until she starts throwing it multiple times in that bat and locates it, I probably wouldn't even regard it right now. Here's the 1 0 to Blaine. Blaine, the only Tiger hitter so far today to get on base with a base hit. Two have reached on walks, but only Blaine has a hit today for the Tigers. 2 0 count. And a strike over the heart of the plate. Here we go, 
Jesse hoping to get things started for the for the Auburn Tigers here. There's the off speed. Yes, that's what we're looking for. Kerpich's doing a really nice job mixing speeds. You talked about it, hitting all four quadrants. One strike away from her fourth strikeout of the afternoon. Like I said before, with Maddie Kerpix having both a great rise ball and a great changeup, she's able to utilize both to get strikeouts. Flare into left field and caught on the run by Chambly. A 1 2 3 inning. And now Kerpix has sat down six in a row for the Bulldogs who lead it 1-0 as we head into the bottom of the third in Athens. We talked about it coming into the weekend. Auburn, not only one of the better offensive teams in the country, but they might have the best three-starter rotation in the country. We're seeing Shelby Lowe get the start in the circle today, Alicia, but we've also seen terrific performances this year already from the Michigan transfer, Annabelle Weidra, and then Matty Penta, who's 11 and 0 to start the year. And that's tough when you've got three great pitchers, three aces you can put in at any moment. That's hard to create some chaos in the box. It's hard to stay on balance. Dallas Goodnight trying to create a little chaos with a leadoff bunt. Second time through the order here for the Bulldogs. They lead it one nothing. And if you're just joining us, Sydney Chambly with two outs. Laser down the line last inning. Stretched a single to a double. Then there was an errant throw on the same play with aggressive heads up base running. Got to third. And then a double to center field drove her in. And that is how the Bulldogs jumped out to an early lead. Good night swings away. Flair in the center and a diving play won't get there. And heads up base running from Good night. She's in the second safely. That's what we call no man's land. Good night getting it done. Getting the soft. Left over the plate a little bit too much by low. Good night was able to put it in no man's land and Utilize her speed to get to second on that ball. Lindsey Garcia made a great effort in right field to try and come in and get that ball, but just looked like it hung up a little bit. And now Goodnight with a leadoff double gives an opportunity to Sarah Mosley, who doubled and homered last night for Georgia. Heads up play by Good Night, just utilizing her speed, getting there. Now we got the leadoff runner on second base, ready to score on a base hit. Mosley into left field. Goodbye. A base hit. How about a home run? Two run bomb for Sarah Mosley. And it's a 3 0 lead for Georgia. Really good job by Mosley staying inside that curveball, getting her barrel to it, staying behind it. You see the excitement on her face with this home run. Now putting them ahead three to zero. Eighth home run of the year for Sarah Mosley. And it clears the bases now. Nobody out for Jada Kearney. Kearney handcuffed foul territory and caught by Brie Ellis. One down. 
And how good has Sarah Mosley been in the box this year for Georgia? Her eight home runs, good for top 15 in the country. And her bat didn't necessarily start as hot as people were anticipating preseason All-American, but this week, that bat has come alive. And now Lindy Ray Davis at the dish for the Bulldogs. Sydney Kuma on deck. 3-0 lead for Georgia here in game two of this three-game set. Nice little rise ball action from low. Now ahead in the count. This is how you want to come back from a home run. Shake it off and throw some strikes. Get it done. in foul territory and caught by Annabelle Weidra. Two away. And good job by Weidra. Calling her off for that fly ball in foul territory last minute. So back-to-back -back pop outs after the home run and now Sydney Kuma with the bases empty and two down. Flew out to second in her first at bat. And turns away from a high heater inside. That's what you call a brush back pitch. <laughs> Got a home run, two run home run. You're just reclaiming your territory on the plate. Make sure everybody knows. Yep. That's all me. I just can't fathom having that type of control over a pitch. You just, you know, this is this is a game we've played for over 10 years. It's, you know, they say you master things in seven. And, you know, going into college, it was even hard for me to be able to do that. But Coach Rocha, who's now at Oklahoma, did a really good job at kind of fine-tuning. And uh, I can only imagine that's the kind of development that Lowe has also had at Auburn being in the SEC and being a really competitive team with some great staff and a great pitching coach. Well, we talked about it. Shelby Lowe battled injury much of last year, but this past week or two has had a few outings with four innings, five innings. We saw her for two and two thirds last night was dealing with some arm pain earlier on in the season. But seemingly that's gone. She has looked really good today, aside from that two-run homer that we saw earlier this inning from Sarah Mosley. And the 2-1 is fouled out of play. She has. Sometimes you got to separate injury from soreness and hurt. And a lot of the time, we're always sore as pitchers, but it's our job to be able to take care of our bodies and be able to work that out. And a lot of the time, we are continuing to throw with that soreness and fatigue. That's just a part of the game, but we do our best to just maintain and work it out. It's a dog in her. Yep. Looking for her first strike out of the game. 2-2. Two -two. Won't get it there. That is crushed but foul. Wow. Sydney Kuma just a little bit out ahead of that one. Otherwise, that would have been over the scoreboard in left field. She's looking for the sixth home run in this series so far with that one. Long strike. Another 2-2. Two -two. And the count is full.
Kluma, you can just see her confidence exuding with her poise in the box. And draws a two-out walk. Confidently laying off the payoff pitch. And extending the inning for Jaden Fields. Fields flew out to right in her first A-B. Handcuffed up the middle on this one. Peralta gloves, and that ends the inning. A two-run bomb for Sarah Mosley. Gives Georgia a 3-0 lead. When we come back, we'll talk to Auburn head coach Mickey Dean. Welcome back to Athens, Georgia. A 3-0 lead for the Bulldogs. And we're now joined by Mickey Dean, the head coach for the Auburn Tigers. Coach, appreciate your time. Uh, one thing we're noticing a little bit in this game from Maddie Kerpix in the circle for Georgia, mixing up her speeds a bit more, throwing harder than we saw yesterday. How do your hitters adjust the rest of the way in this game against Maddie Kerpix? Well, you always come in with a game plan. I think sometimes adrenaline takes over and, uh, you know, uh, we're, just, we're going to keep battling our bats, uh, see if we can't get back to our game plan and, you know, lay off that high stuff. Um, it's been out of the zone. We've been chasing it. And then, like you said, she's been really mixing her speeds well down. I know you've been really pleased with your team's performance in the non-conference, competitive in every game. How about this environment for opening weekend of the SEC? Oh, it's a great environment, great environment. Uh, our kids never played here before, so, uh, uh, you know, it's 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 awesome. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're glad to have you here, and we appreciate your time. Good luck the rest of the way. War Eagle. It is an interesting point he brings up that his team, nobody on his team, has ever played in Athens before. The last time Auburn played a series in this ballpark was 2017. A lot of that had to do with COVID, but uh, also the league is just so darn big. You don't get to play everybody yeah. every year. Top of the fourth, Kerpix back in the circle. And a first pitch ball to Bree Ellis. Had a monster home run last night for the Tigers. Who have been set down six in a row against Kerpix in this game. You can tell Ellis wanted a bite of that rise ball, but held on it. grounded out on an excuse me swing if you remember back in the first inning tapped it right back to Kerpix who flipped to first a swinging butt we might call it yes that. but still moved the runners she did the second and third in scoring position so we got some silver lining out of that one for sure only one hit in this game so far for Auburn it was Jesse Blaine Back in the first. Tigers have stranded a runner at least in two of the first three innings. And now a 3 2 count. I think maybe there were some nerves yesterday in the circle for Georgia, but today, Herpix looks extremely composed, confident, and she's really hitting her spots. and producing some fly balls and getting some outs. Payoff pitch. You told me something today that I thought was surprising. You told me you had nerves before every game in college, not just the SEC games. Every single game, once I stepped on that field, uh, you know, I, I had to meditate. I had to take a few minutes to meditate just to get my nerves in order and I can imagine some of these players on the field can feel that, especially going into SEC weekend, but kind of kind of have to push them down a little bit and work through them because being on this field is pressure, but I always say pressure is a privilege. Were you more 
nervous when you were in the circle versus in the field? Absolutely. The ball yeah. is in my hand every single pitch, but, you know, I, I have confidence just because I know I put the work in and the practice, and I had great bullpens, so. Having defense like that will give you confidence, too. Mosley going up to get it on a rope. One down. I don't think she had time to do anything but just react. The shot right to Mosley sticking her glove up and making that catch. Like I said, all she did was react. Hot corner. Now seven in a row retired by Maddie Kerpich. Here is Lindsay Garcia. Struck out to end the first inning with two on. One of three strikeouts for Maddie Kerpich in this game. Garcia not reaching base her first at bat, but still a threat. She put the Auburn Tigers up six to five last night, as we mentioned earlier, to win the ball game. So she has a little bit of stock, I'd say, this series already. Homered, <laughs> one of three home runs last night. One of those given up by Maddie Kerpix, the first home run she gave up all year. Went 55 innings without allowing a bomb. That's incredible. Has rebounded pretty well today. Set down seven in a row and has allowed one hit through three and a third. It's all about how you come back. You're going to have off days individually and as a team, but it's how you bounce back, how you make adjustments. I can come back better the next day. Looks like she made the, all the right ones so far. Give her strikeout number four on the off speed. Sunday night at 9 Eastern, 8 Central, right here on the SEC Network and the ESPN app. We'll have our annual two-hour SEC Now selection special, breaking down the men's and women's basketball brackets and previewing all the games that our SEC teams are playing in March. First pitch swinging for KK McCrary. And it is caught on the edge of the outfield grass by Ellie Armistead. Nine in a row retired by Maddie Kerpix. We will talk with Georgia head coach Tony Baldwin when we come back. Back in Athens, a three-run lead for the Georgia Bulldogs and now joined by head coach Tony Baldwin. Coach, uh, really tight game last night. 6-5, you guys fall to Auburn. You come back here and you've gotten an incredible performance by Maddie Kerpix. She set down nine in a row. What are you seeing from her in the circle this afternoon? Yeah, I think she's just competing well. I, I don't think she's got her A stuff today, but she's competing. She's letting her spin work. I think Chelsea's doing a really good job calling a game for her, and and uh, that's all we can ask is just give ourselves an opportunity to be successful, and, and Maddie's doing that right now. One player who's done that for you today is Dallas Goodnight. She had that rope down the right field line and then stretched it into a double, then got to third to set you guys up. How impactful has she been in her first year transferring over? Well, Dallas has been great. Uh, she, her competitiveness, her speed, versatility has brought a lot to our team. Now, she's the one who got the bloop to fall in. Sydney Chambly is the yes. one who hit the triple down the line, and she's a great player, too. I'm thankful that they're both Bulldogs. Coach, appreciate your time. Good luck the rest of the way. Appreciate you. Have a great day. So, Georgia on top three zip. And a new pitcher into the ball game for the Auburn Tigers. Annabelle Weidra, the Michigan transfer, will take the ball to start the fourth. And we have seen Weidra already in this series. She's been terrific in her first season coming over to Auburn. 
And she will get Chambly, Curlin, Armistead. And remember, as Coach just reminded me, it was Chambly, not good night, who stretched that single into a double, then got to third. That set up the first run of the ball game for the Georgia Bulldogs. Weidra, the jack of all trades. Came into this weekend, I believe about 19 strikeouts away from 500 career. Fifty-one strikeouts in less than four innings of work so far this season for Weidra. But I think one of the most shocking numbers on that stat line, she's only had three walks in almost 40 innings of work. That's a great stat. When you have a high strikeout ratio and a low walk ratio, you're pitching around the zone and getting stuff done and being efficient with your pitches. Denver Bryant has taken over for Annabelle Weidra at third base. Weidra started the game at third. And Abby Smith now playing in right field for the Tigers. Two two to Chambly. Upstairs for a ball. Chambly has already doubled in this game. Got a two out rally started in the second. Back to back doubles for the Bulldogs in the second inning. Chambly pops it up foul and off the screen. Weidra with the great rise ball. Got two strikeouts last night and only one and two thirds innings. So I think if she utilizes her, her rise ball today, sets that up as her strikeout pitch, we're going to see some success. Fly ball to center. Packer gliding over to make the play one gone. And now Allie Kerland. Yeah, it's interesting you talk about sort of the variation of pitches for Weidra. Mickey Dean told us she came in with one pitch that she felt confident in. Now she has three. Yeah, curveball, change up rise. I think it just speaks to the development that she's had already within this past year. Can't necessarily get away with having one pitch in this conference, but. Doing a little bit of everything, fielding <laughs> her position, two gone. Absolutely. And the thing is, when you can field your position like that and play multiple positions, no one's going to call you off because they know you can get it done. Well, we asked you know, Mickey Dean what kind of stands out about Annabelle Weidra. He said her athleticism, and he said her athleticism kind of reminds him of Odyssey Alexander. It's a pretty good player to get compared to <laughs> by her head coach. Absolutely. Odyssey, a great friend of mine, great ball player, even better work ethic. Got the chance to play with her in Athletes Unlimited the past few years, and um, what a great player she is. and even better person off the field. So I can definitely see that comparison. 
Armistead in the box for Georgia. Two down, nobody on. And a three-run lead for the Bulldogs here in the bottom of the fourth. Five hits for Georgia to Auburn's one. I do want to see a diving play by Weidra now that Coach Dean <laughs> <laughs> made that comparison. Saying that sky-high pop-up was too easy. <laughs> too easy. Sun's not out. Strike on the outside corner, one and two. Beautiful curveball. You can just see in how she released it. She stayed with it. Was able to paint the outside corner for strike number two. Also has a changeup. Really good changeup that she used. It was too cold for her in Michigan. She wanted to come down here and get some sun. <laughs> Definitely too cold in Michigan this time of year. Weidra is an Alabama native, grew up in Hoover, Alabama. Uh, Mickey Dean told us, though, she committed young to Michigan and then decided she wanted to come back closer to home. And Auburn already had a good idea of who she was from scouting the various tournaments during her youth and prep level days was the perfect fit. 2-2 Two -two launch foul and out of play. And certainly she's added some real depth to this Auburn pitching staff that was a little bit banged up last year. Talked about it. Shelby Lowe dealt with injury for much of last season. The burden fell heavily on Maddie Penta. But now there are three terrific and capable starters in this staff. And a line drive up the middle, and Armistead keeps the inning alive, turning the lineup over to Dallas Goodnight. Armistead not doing too much with that pitch. In that outside curveball, right back up the middle for a base hit. Corner infield in for good night. I've already seen her stretch a double in this game. Elite speed coming over from Alabama. Looks like they might have something up their sleeve. Runner takes off. Throw down is not in time. Bang, bang play. And a good throw by Aspen Godwin. But Armistead got in under the tag. Kind of crossed her body up a little bit with that pitch, making it a little bit slower for her to get that throw down. But a great lead. Way to leg it out by Armistead to get to second base. Put herself in scoring position for good night. Now four for four and stolen base attempts this year. Puts the defense in a little bit of a frenzy when you have such great speed, not only on second base, but in the box. Looking for the fourth run of this game for Georgia. Two one. I think right now as a pitcher, I'd go back and take a deep breath and just worry about the next pitch. You're behind a little bit in the count, but all you need to do is produce a ground ball, pop fly, just to get out of this inning. We got two outs. Gotta make sure we keep that composure. Hitters count to good night. And fouls it straight back. Opportunity here with two down for Georgia to really bust this game open.
scored two in the third, one in the second. Looking for three straight innings with runs on the board. throwing that curveball inside, trying to jam good night. It's a foul ball in her hands. Armistead at second. Good night at the plate. 3 2. Roped in the right field. Here comes Armistead. Throw from Smith, not in time, and it's a 4 0 lead for the Bulldogs. Pitch by Weidra on the inside corner, and Goodnight just turns on it, scoring the Armistead from second base, who has tremendous speed. Gets it done for the Bulldogs. And what a difference a day makes. Mosley steps in. She's already homered twice in this series, once yesterday, once today. Georgia stranded nine runners last night in game one. Can't win a ball game like that. Yeah, today they're three for four yeah. with runners in scoring position. And Talk they're about five for eight, Alicia, with two outs. That's a beautiful number, if I do say so myself. <laughs> Can Mosley keep it going here? And then when you add Kerpix to the equation, holding them down on defense with her pitching, you just can't beat that. And Kerpix in the circle this afternoon's allowed one hit, and she's set down nine Tiger batters in a row. Makes my heart happy. As a pitcher. I'm sure the home runs make your heart happy too, because you, you also swing the bat <laughs> a little bit. Sometimes. Oh one to Mosley. Good night takes off and she is safe at second base. And two stolen bags in the inning with two outs. I love this aggressiveness from Tony Baldwin. I love it. And we will have a challenge from Mickey Dean. He felt like the tag was down in time. There might also be another challenge with the obstruction called on that play. With Peralta maybe being in front of the bag before the ball was. Here's another look at it. Tag comes down from Peralta. Oh, yeah, that's a good challenge from Mickey Dean. You can see it. Tag is applied before the foot. But did she get the body? Interesting. Looks like she gets her, right? If it's not the leg, it's the arm. Well, the officials, rather the umpires, said that she didn't catch the body. And therefore, good night, safe at second with her eighth stolen base of the year. She is perfect in stolen base attempts this season, and now a runner in scoring position for Mosley. Pop up to left, and Peralta is back to make the catch. Another run in the inning for Georgia. They've scored in three straight. They lead it by four as we head to the fifth. After dropping game one last night, Georgia has had both incredible pitching in the circle from Matty Kerpix, who set down nine in a row. They've also had timely hits and really good base running offensively. They have, and Kerpix is getting it done in the circle with only one hit, and that was in the first inning. Lowe coming in with three innings pitched, five hits. Georgia's timely hitting, taking advantage on the bases is Putting them up there on the board with leading this game 4-0. to zero. Seven hits for Georgia. We talked about it last night. They left nine runners on base. 
Today they're three of five with runners in scoring position and five of nine with two outs. Now the bottom part of the order for the Tigers. Michaela Packer leads things off for Auburn. What adjustments, what strategy would you change up here if you're Auburn? Top five and you haven't had a hit since the first inning. I'm going to lay off the up pitch. I'm going to lay off the rise ball. She's getting some pop-ups here. So I'm looking down in the zone. I know some people like to sit on the changeup. I might just do that now. I know she's throwing it for a strike. No, I can sit on it, get my bat on the ball, and not do too much. Just all we need is all we need is hits. If I'm thinking hitting against Kerr picks at this moment, pass the bat. O2. Outside for ball one. Kerpix pitched two and two thirds last night. Only gave up one hit. It was a home run, the first given up of the season. Gave up a bomb to Bree Ellis. First home run in 55 innings allowed by Kerpix. Flying ball foul and out of play. As we said earlier, if you leave the ball over the plate for a team like Auburn, I know they're both leading the SEC in home runs, but when you leave the ball over the plate for Bree, who is known to hit some Bree bombs, that's what you're going to get. <laughs> Kerr picks trying to bounce it, trying to get her to swing and miss with some leverage in the count. Now 2-2. Two, two. Packer can swing it too. Developed some pop in her bat in her sophomore season. Hit nine home runs last year. Lays off the 2-2 two, two upstairs. has not allowed a base runner since the beginning of the second inning. Walked KK McCrary, then struck out two and got a fly out to end the inning. In the midst of setting down nine in a row. Eighth pitch of this at bat. Packer is fighting. Another payoff. Flared to short, Armistead back to make the play. Packer can't get it done, another pop fly with that rise ball. Tuesday night right here on the SEC Network and the ESPN app, our SEC inside grants you an all access pass to the SEC men's basketball tournament at 10 Eastern. You'll get never before seen footage and sound from players and coaches, a real behind the scenes look on SEC inside. Aspen Godwin at the plate, her first plate appearance of the afternoon. As you can see on the patch on her left shoulder, she is a graduate student. Congratulations, Aspen Goodwin. Came in to replace Aubrey Lizenby behind the plate. who got the start today for Auburn. I wish it the pay. <laughs> she has started nearly 80 games behind the plate in her career for the Tigers in her fifth season. And there's a nasty off-speed pitch that just missed the zone from Kerpix. Might have just missed a hair high. It looked pretty good. Definitely didn't miss uh, off the plate.
Godwin in the midst of her best season at the plate statistically. Small sample size, of course. We've only played the non-conference portion in the opening weekend of SEC play, but we asked Mickey Dean, what's the catalyst for this? He said she's finally playing free at the plate. When you're loose and you're free, you just come into yourself and we're able to get stuff done because you don't have to necessarily worry about those jitters. Just go out there and let that muscle memory talk. That confidence speak. Batting 3.03 this year. 2 2. She is searching for Auburn's second hit of the ball game and their first since the top of the first. Jesse Blaine, the only Auburn Tiger to reach base with a hit this afternoon against Maddie Kerpix. And with Blaine, she didn't try to do too much. All she did was poke it right up back up the middle. Nice line drive, single. That's all we need. Godwin laces it foul down the left field line. There is some activity in the Georgia bullpen. It is Kylie Macy getting loose. Remember, Kerpix threw two and two thirds last night. She's up to 83 pitches here this afternoon. Another 2-2. Two -two. She misses upstairs. So the count runs full for the second time to start the top of the fifth. Godwin goes down swinging. Fifth strikeout of the afternoon for Kerpix. Beautiful rise ball. Kerpix really getting in on her hands, making that ball jump. She's just under it enough to get a swing and miss for another Kerpix strikeout. Now eight strikeouts in the series for Kerpix. Here is Annabelle Weidra. Started the game at third base, has since come into the circle for the Tigers. Top of the fifth, and this is just her second at bat of the game. Kerpix has retired 11 straight. Something is definitely working for her today. Now you talked about it towards the beginning of the game. We saw a lot of off speed from Kerpix last night. Today, she's been a little bit sharper with the hard stuff, in spite of the fact that Tony Baldwin says she doesn't have her A stuff today. That's pretty scary for the rest of the league. I agree, but when you can get it done without your A game, that just goes to show the caliber of pitcher that you are. You're not always gonna have your A game. But she looks pretty good to me. Yeah, I'm wondering what her A game looks like. <laughs> I don't want to be in the box when that happens. No. Nobody on in a 2-1 count, two down, top five, and a three-run lead, four-run lead, rather, for Georgia. As that's popped behind the screen and out of play. Kerpix throwing her rise ball a lot today. As I said, producing a lot of pop-ups. Outs, foul balls. Even strikeouts like last at bat. <laughs> Just got a piece. Weidra stays alive at two and two. Ball. What a pitch. 
Kerpix with her sixth strikeout of the ball game. And she has set down 12 in a row in Athens. Getting set for the bottom of the fifth. Georgia leads it for zip. They've scored in each of the last three innings. In addition to getting some incredible pitching from Maddie Kerpik, she's set down 12 in a row. And uh, coming into this game, you know, last night Georgia stranded 12 batters, did not take advantage in certain spots of having runners in scoring position. That hasn't been the case today. No, it absolutely has not. They're getting on base and they're doing their job at moving runners and just taking advantage of what they're given. Jada Kearney looks at a first pitch strike from Annabelle Weedra in her second inning of relief. Shelby Lowe got the start this afternoon. Kearney has had an excellent series so far. Today, one for two. As she fouls back the 0 1. And in night one, she was three of four with a double. Has reached base safely in eight consecutive games. She's got a streak going. Outfield playing her deep and straight away. Eight homers for Kearney already this year. I think that was a little bit too close in the zone with an 0-2 count. If I have count leverage like this, I'm trying to make her get herself out. Good eye from Kearney laying off the 0-2. Meet of the lineup here for Georgia. Kearney, Davis, Kuma. Three, four, and five hitters. A chance to really bust it open here in the bottom of the fifth, leading by four. And the one two shot foul. Georgia lost the game last night to Auburn. 6 5. We saw four home runs in the ball game. But every time Georgia struck offensively, Auburn would come back that next half inning and counter. Give him a punch back. That's why Auburn was so successful last night with falling short three hits compared to Georgia. Another tight pitch taken by Kearney. That levels the count at two apiece. Two two from Weidra, and Kearney takes ball three. Tough at bat here from Kearney. She was down 0-2, and has taken three straight balls. Taken three straight balls, but has been six consecutive pitches on the inside corner. I'd love to see a curveball change her eyes a little bit. Get her to swing through it or get herself out on a ground ball. Weidra comes into the Game this afternoon with a 1.27 ERA and a 7-0 record. Gets a swing and a miss on the 3-2 and sets down the first batter of the inning with a strikeout. Well, we talked about it with both teams. They return strong cores from successful seasons last year. Certainly Georgia, a successful season, lost to Duke in the regional final. Look at all they bring back. 75% nearly of their home runs and RBI production. 
And when you tally up that number and, and include the transfers that they've had, it's hard to beat. Dallas Goodnight transferring in from Alabama. She's at the top of the lineup. Has already doubled and singled today. Drove in a run, stole a bag, scored. Starts in center field. It's a lot of production. Line drive into right field, and it's down for a base hit. Davis does not beat out the throw, and immediately a signal to Tony Baldwin to challenge that play. Wow. Regardless of whether it stands as an out, what a throw by Abby Smith in right field. And a grand by the right field replacement. Remember, she didn't start the ball game. It was Lindsey Garcia out in right field at the beginning of the day. That's a great heads up play. You get a ball hit hard to you in right field. Davis legging it out. Ooh. Does the ball beat her there? I don't know, what does that look like to you? To me, it's a tie goes to the runner situation. It does look like a tie. But in this angle, it almost looks like the ball beats, beats her. Call on the field is out at first base. Davis is confident. She's already taken the shin protector off. She's ready to roll at first base. A really good job by the right fielder. As I was saying, heads up play, knowing that the ball was hit hard, that she might have a play at first base coming up and firing. Something we practice every day as outfielders. Abby Tar Smith, the sophomore, out in right field. Took it on one hop, came up, fired it into first base. And the review continues. See the umpires have signaled that the call on the field will stand. What a play by Abby Smith. And Bree Ellis to have the presence of mind at first base to turn and receive the ball from Abby Smith. Two down. Just a great play. There's not many assists, assists that come from the outfield and even fewer coming from right field thrown at first base. So great job. So now Sydney Kuma with two down and the base is empty. Bottom five here in Athens, Georgia on top by four. Trying to split this series and take us to the rubber match, which will happen later on this afternoon. First pitch strike to Kuma. She is one of those returners who's played so many games for Tony Baldwin, making her 170th career start this afternoon. And the same could be said for Ellie Armistead. Certainly Sarah Mosley, who's homered in this game. But then you talked about the additions of transfers and even freshmen, because Tony Baldwin is injected some freshmen into the lineup in significant areas. This is a Georgia team that has aspirations of getting back to the Women's College World Series. 1-1, one, one, line right to second base and caught by McCondishi. A 1-2-3 inning for Annabelle Weidra. Can the Tigers get the bats going a little bit against Maddie Kerpix? We'll find out in the top of the sixth. Matt Schumacher, Alicia Casio back with you. What a day for Maddie Kerpix of Georgia. Five innings, just one hit allowed. Kerpix has sat down 12 in a row. She has six strikeouts on the day. When you have multiple pitches to use, like her changeup and her rise ball for strikeouts, you're bound to be successful when you can set batters up in order to. That one hit came all the way back in the first inning to Jesse Blaine who we will see in the sixth. Top of the order due up against Kerpix, third time through for Auburn. And it starts with Nelia Peralta down four zip. 
with two innings left here in game two. Melia showing bunt, trying to get something done just to get another base runner on board for Auburn. One thing we heard Tony Baldwin tell us during our mid-game interview back in the fourth, with as good as Maddie Kerpix has been, and she's been really good, she's set down 12 in a row, she hasn't shown her A stuff. 92 pitches, 57 of them for strikes. There's been times where she's gotten behind in the count multiple times throughout this game, and yet, Alicia, she's found ways to battle through that. She absolutely has, and she's also allowed her defense to work with the amount of pop-ups that she's got in this game. Her defense was able to make plays on those balls, and you can't just get 12 retired in a row without using your defense. So I think she's done a great job at utilizing her pitches in order to make them miss swing. 2-2 Two -two count to Peralta. I will say, this is the time in the game for Kerpix to really hone in. She's already thrown five scoreless innings. So right now it's time for her to just really hone in on these last two innings and really just finish the game. She's doing a great job so far, but to continue that and just make sure that she's sticking to the game plan. Gets a line drive into right field. Back on it is Kearney and makes the play. 13 in a row set down now by Kerpix. Great job tracking that ball by Kearney, getting a beat on it and just making a running catch. Uh, now Sydney Cox will come in to pinch hit for Carly McCondishy in the two spot. So can Sydney Cox get a little rally started here down four. Kerpix has set down 13 in a row. Cox first pitch swinging right at Chambly. Two gone. Another rise ball and another. Pop fly for Kerpix. And so now Jesse Blaine, the lone Tiger to get a hit on Madison Kerpix this afternoon. Can she do it again? Can she start that rally? I think at this point it's just simplifying your at-bats. Now, one of the things that you wanted to see from Auburn a couple of innings ago was to sit, to take some pitches. We haven't seen that here in the sixth. A lot of first pitch swings from this Auburn top half of the lineup. Yeah, I think just showing a little bit, you know, of patience. She's throwing a lot of rise balls, throwing a lot of changeups, and we know that. We've got to make sure we're staying off that high pitch so we're not getting ourselves out. Came into the inning at 90 pitches, 56 of them for strikes. So it's not like she's been pegging the zone with every pitch this afternoon, but she's enticed these Tigers hitters to go after pitches. That's the great thing about finesse. 101st pitch of the afternoon. When you have finesse, you can utilize your pitches in the zone to set up other pitches to get those swing and misses or those pop-ups or ground balls. One hit allowed this afternoon. That was to Jesse Blaine, who digs in here with a one-two count, two down, and the base is empty. And goes down swinging. Seven strikeout of the afternoon. 15 retired in a row for Maddie Kerpix. Opening weekend of SEC play rolls on from Athens, Georgia. Game two of our three-game set between the Auburn Tigers 
And the Georgia Bulldogs, one of a number of top 25 showdowns you can not only see today, but all season long in this league. And now Auburn will go back to the bullpen and bring in Matty Penta. Now the second time in this series that we've seen three pitchers used by Mickey Dean. Maddie Penta, she's gonna throw high 60s. She's gonna, she's gonna zip it in there. And I think uh, when she's most successful, she's also using her off speed. When you're using your off speed, it's gonna make your fast stuff just look that much faster. Pitched three innings last night. Gave up one unearned run on four hits and struck out four. Taking on Jaden Fields here to start. Screwball missed outside a little bit. I think brought her in to stop a little bit of the bleeding. Give them a chance to come back and make stuff happen offensively. And it's actually Jaden Goodwin who has come in to pinch hit for Jaden Fields. Jaden Goodwin actually played her sister this Wednesday at Georgia State. Little family reunion. Georgia State not too far away. About an hour and a half from Athens. Good one, one of a couple of freshmen that Tony Baldwin is super high on this year and feels like can have a real impact on this Georgia team that returns so much from a season ago. Takes the one, two, low and away. Chambly on deck. Curling in the hole for a Georgia team that leads it 4 0 here in the bottom of the sixth. Georgia just looking for some more insurance. They're already up 4 0, but can't hurt to have a few more. Seven hits today for Georgia. And we've seen some aggressive base running, two for two on the base paths as well, trying to steal bases. Full count to good one. A walk to lead off the inning for Goodwin. If you're joining us looking for Texas A&M in Arkansas, it is starting on the app. And we'll transition to SEC Network once our game here in Athens concludes. Sydney Chambly at the dish. Saw a stretch of single into a double and then advanced to third earlier in this game. Here's a stolen base attempt, and Goodwin is in safely. And Packer was there to back up the throw. Otherwise, Goodwin could be at third base right now. Georgia again trying to get some more insurance, putting a runner in scoring position with no outs. Got some speed in the box that can make stuff happen. One oh count the Chambly has doubled and scored also flew out to center. Nine doubles this year for Chambly that is top 10 in the country. And now Aspen Godwin wants to chat things over with Matty Penta. Nine doubles this season, but can also drop down a bunt. Be safe at first base. When you have that many tools in your arsenal, it makes it hard for the defense to defend. 
Probably makes her tough to pitch against, too. Absolutely. The 1-1. One, one. In the left field and down for a base hit. Goodwin up to third. And now runners at the corners to start off the sixth for the Georgia Bulldogs. Goodwin with another hit, just hitting it where it's pitched over the shortstop's head in the 5 6 hole. Not quite getting the runner in, but moving her. Still a win win. I can imagine they would send Goodwin to have both runners in the scoring position. For Chambly at first, Goodwin at third, and now Ali Curland at the dish. Georgia four of six with runners in scoring position today. Stark contrast from what we saw last night. They left nine runners aboard. They have taken full advantage this afternoon and lead it four nothing here in the bottom of the sixth. Curlin sprays it foul. A hit and run was on. I saw Goodwin running to second base trying to Get a hit on that, try to score. Or at least get to third from first on a base hit. One one in the dirt and Chambly stays put. Chambly has Stolen five bags in five attempts so far this season for Georgia. She takes off, ball gets away. In comes Goodwin from third and she's safe at home. Chambly sliding into third and is tagged out on a great play by Aspen Godwin. Didn't make the play at the plate, but then zipped it up to third base. And Denver Bryant was there to make the tag. Good reads on both parts to advance. So the lead is five. One down and still Allie Curland in the box with a 3-1 count after that wild pitch scored Jaden Goodwin. There's all kinds of stuff happening on that play, but that's just what you talked about earlier. Georgia creating havoc, not only in the box, but on the base pass with their speed. When you have that speed, you're going to try to take third on that and be aggressive on the bases. It didn't necessarily hurt to get out at third base, but definitely good intuition by stealing home and getting to second on that. Hitters count to Curlin at three and one. Base is now empty for Georgia. Ellie Armistead on deck in the nine spot, and then the lineup will turn over for the fourth time in this game for the Bulldogs. Curlin takes ball four upstairs. I think what's going to be most important for Penta right now is just finding the strike zone. a pinch hitter it is Haley Eaton and we also have a pinch runner for Georgia 
rather it's Eaton pinch running not pinch hitting so it is Armistead at the plate with Eaton at first and it is Emma Rolfe in the circle for Auburn not Maddie Penta. Armistead pops up the bun and an over the shoulder basket catch by Bree Ellis. Two gone. Good heads up play, being able to react to that and take a drop step to be able to catch that over his shoulders. We got to get that bunt down with one out, runner on first base to move her. So it's back to the top of the order. Dallas, good night with a runner at first base, two down, and a 5 0 lead for Georgia. Good night trying to utilize the ground. I remember when I played here, the ground was extremely hard. A lot of Georgia players, the Emanuels, just chopping it right on down there. Reached first base before the fielders even touched the ball. A lot of tools in her arsenal. I've already seen a single and a double, along with an RBI, a run, and a steal from Goodwin. Takes ball one in the dirt. Definitely took yesterday personal going 0 for 4. Wanted to reinvent herself today and get it done at the plate, and that's exactly what she's doing. She looks good, she looks confident. First year transfer from Alabama. Runner takes off, off one hop, and the throw to first not in time. And Eaton will go from first to third on the error as Goodnight moves up to second base. Creating havoc with the speed. That has been the theme all game long for Georgia. And it just happened again with two outs here in the bottom of the sixth. Exactly. And you could see what her intention was with that first foul ball. All she wanted to do was tap it on the ground and go. And that's exactly what she did. With Auburn creating, with Auburn making errors, she was able to take two and advance the runners. Time called. By whom? I'm not sure. Home plate umpire Cameron Ellison popped out, called time, was looking down the third baseline at Mark Brown. I don't believe Tony Baldwin called time, but nonetheless, Sarah Mosley at the box lines it in the left field to end the inning. When we come back, Auburn, three outs to score five runs here in Athens. It has been all Georgia through six innings. Bulldogs lead Auburn 5 0 in game two of our three game set, trying to split the series with a top 25 Auburn team. Not only have they done it with five runs on nine hits, but they've gotten a superb performance in the circle today from. Madison Kerpix. Alicia, she sat down 15 in a row. 15 in a row is just astronomical, uh, especially in this league with a team like Auburn coming off of those three home runs last night. As I said before, Kerpix just came in here with confidence, with poise, and she's mowing them down, getting some good outs and sitting them down. First pitch is a ball to Bree Ellis. It is the heart of the lineup for Auburn. Ellis, Garcia, and McCrary do up down five. 
It's now or never for the Tigers. Allie Kerland now catching for Georgia. Auburn falling, fouling a lot of balls to that left side. Kerpix is setting them up with that screw ball inside to then come up with a rise ball and get him to pop up or even a change up outside to get them to swing through. Ellis, foul. Ellis 0 for 2 in this game. The only hit for Auburn. Jesse Blaine back in the first inning. Straight back. And a souvenir for a youngster here high up in the bleacher seats behind home plate. Really good crowd on hand for this noon first pitch. And I can't say it enough. Kerpix is throwing this rise ball inside, and it's just looking so good to these batters, or they wouldn't be swinging at it. And if it's not broken, don't fix it. So I keep throwing it. 1-2. Ellis out ahead of that one again. Usually as a pitcher, if they're laying off that rise ball, we got to find another way to get them out, but they're not laying off of it. So as I said before, if I was Kerpix, I would continue to throw it and even set them up with something else if I wanted to. Well, Ellis is a player that you can't mess around with. We know that from last night. Ellis homered off Kerpix. First home run given up by Kerpix in 55 innings to start the season. A Bree bomb, you called it, to deep left field. Has that ability to change the game with one swing. The one two upstairs for a ball. And if I'm Bree Ellis, I'm not necessarily trying to hit a home run right now. I'm just trying to get on base and pass the bat so that we can put some runs on the board. You can't hit a five-run home run to tie the game with one, one batter up, nobody on base. 110th pitch of the game, smack foul. It has been all Kerpix all the way for Georgia. She set down 15 in a row and 17 of the last 19. One hit and two walks allowed. If I'm these Auburn hitters, I might just move back in the box and get off the plate a little bit. Pop up, shallow center. Kuma back at second, one, one, one down. Another pop fly for Kerpix. We got to tally those up at the end of the day. <laughs> Denver Bryant at the dish. Her first at bat of the afternoon, and she goes around on the off speed. I think what's going to be most important for Auburn to make this comeback is to just be patient and swing at good pitches. Bryant drops down a bunt. Kerpix, nobody home at first base, and that snaps a streak of 16 straight Tigers retired. Life still for Auburn here in the top of the seventh. What a beautiful bunt and placement by Bryant. Using her speed to get something done. I've been waiting for that for a few innings now. How about that? First at bat of the afternoon for Bryant, who came in at third base as a defensive replacement, just pinched hit for Lindsey Garcia. 
And now Trezvic pinch hitting for McCrary. First pitch swinging launches it foul. Isis Tresvik, another transfer for Auburn, coming from North Carolina A&T. Already has five home runs this season. Sky high pop up to shallow center. Good night is there. And Georgia one out away now from taking game two. Kayla Packer takes strike one. Kerpik seven strikeouts, two hits. One of them was dropped down four feet in front of home plate. Tony Baldwin says she hasn't had her A stuff, but she has been spectacular nonetheless. I would definitely be happy with my performance <laughs> if I went home with the stat sheet that Kerpix will be going home with today given they do win the game. She has sat down 17 of the last 18 Auburn Tigers. Hunting a complete game shutout here. The 0-2 to Packer. Foul and out of play. Packer just looking to put a ball in play to keep this alive, this game alive, give them a chance to come back and score some runs. Climb the ladder on that one, for sure but she can play around with it when she has that count of 0-2. 120 pitches now for Kerpix. Pretty impressive stuff. Fourth time through the lineup. Kerpix sets down the Tigers with her eighth strikeout of the ball game. And a complete game shutout for Maddie Kerpix. Setting down 18 of the final 19 batters she faced. What a great performance by Kerbix in the circle. Georgia coming back and punching back after a loss last night. They tie the series up at one. And we will send you out to AM in Arkansas with Chucky Kempf and Danielle Laurie.